Frame lines indoors. Have you eaten all those hula hoops already? I may have eaten some hula hoops. Please try. Welcome to Frame Lines Indoors. Uh, big plans today involve making this video and waiting for a delivery of snacks. So uh, yeah, let's get into it. So today I wanted to talk about street photography with a rangefinder, specifically a Leica M10. It's my kind of daily go-to camera. I wanted to talk about why I use it for street photography, why I think a rangefinder is quite a good system for street photography, and uh, yeah, just some pictures I've taken with it, and just a kind of general photo chat. So I hadn't really ever used a rangefinder system before, uh, until about two years ago I picked up a Leica M6 which is a film camera. So I really love the kind of whole process of using it, just generally walking around, snapping pictures on the street with it. The shutter sound, super nice. The film advance, really, really nice as well. Uh, yeah, just a, loads of fun to use. So I used that for a few months, um, just shot some film on the street. Uh, here are a few favorites that I got with that camera. <laughs> So why use a rangefinder over kind of autofocus systems? So prior to this I was using a Sony camera with the fancy eye detect and autofocus system which was amazing, I mean it made it pretty impossible to miss a shot. Um, if you did miss a shot it was 100% your fault because the autofocusing just kind of nailed it all the time. I found myself maybe wanting to try and focus on something else in the scene, maybe like behind some glass or I don't know, just trying to experiment and focusing at different points and I found it quite tricky sometimes to kind of dive into the menu, fiddle around with something by which time it was gone. But with a manual focus camera you can choose at your own kind of leisure what you want to focus on. You have the kind of rangefinder patch and you can obviously line it up so if you're shooting through a window you can line it up to something inside behind the window or in front of the window or someone sitting at a certain distance it's much easier to kind of choose where you want to focus you can kind of experiment between different depths as you can see it's quite a kind of manageable size uh, it's weighty definitely but you can quite happily have it around your neck all day get the shoulder action in look at that oh boy also the kind of benefit of this kind of style of camera is I have quite a big nose. I find if I'm using an SLR, it's like I'm looking down the middle, my nose is mashed against the screen. This way I can fit it down the side nicely. Uh, don't pull that face. You know what I mean. Uh, it's just that if you have a large nose, rangefinders, I find are much better. That's a hot tip. Frame lines, hot tip of the day. Nose space. Along with obviously the uh, nose issue, you can have your other eye open to kind of see what else is going on so you don't walk into the middle of the road or you can kind of see other elements walking into the frame so that's quite handy to be able to use both eyes when you're kind of like blocked behind an SLR. I should get an SLR for demonstration as so. Let's see. The kind of main advantage I find to using a kind of rangefinder system like this is the optical viewfinder. I know there are some really nice electronic viewfinders out there today, but my eyes just can't get on with it for some reason. I know uh, Shane talked about it in his other video about shooting street photography at night. Uh, he ended up buying a DSLR just because looking at the kind of small screen at night he found his eyes get quite tired. The benefit of an optical viewfinder is it's literally just a piece of glass uh, with a kind of focusing patch in the middle. so. I can happily use this all day. Much prefer using an optical viewfinder if I can. Um, so yeah, that's kind of big advantage to me. One of the main reasons people use rangefinder systems for street photography is to be able to take advantage of hyperfocal distancing. What that means is um, if you look at the lens of the camera, you can see there's a distance scale that relates to the f-stop. So for example, if you set the camera to f8, if it's a nice sunny day, you can look at the distance scale and see what kind of distance from you is going to be in focus. So f8, the area from 1.5 meters to 
five meters it's going to be in focus so my favorite thing to do is walk down oxford street on a sunny afternoon set the lens to f8 um, maybe the shutter speed it may be either one five hundredth or one thousandth of a second depending on how bright it is and then you can set the distance scale on the lens i like to keep it uh, at around 1.5 to 2 meters and then yeah i don't need to think about focusing i just know that the distance i have is going to be in focus so here are some pictures i've taken walking up and down oxford street in the summer uh, setting my distance between 1.5 and 2 meters ish uh, i've got that kind of extra field of focus to play with so yeah i just kind of um go for a walk and just kind of snap away um, if anything is closer i can just quickly switch the lens to maybe a meter if needs be or if I want to get something further away it's just a very quick movement of the uh, focusing ring so yeah it's pretty quick to be honest I definitely found myself missing a few shots to begin with but the more I practiced the kind of you learn how the kind of camera works you know how you kind of almost get like a kind of muscle memory of the distance scale uh, it's not much different to an autofocus camera to be honest with you but it's much more kind of tactile and satisfying and because you're kind of aware of the kind of focus and the aperture and the shutter speed I find myself getting much less distracted like before if I was using a kind of more automated camera I'd be looking at my phone maybe just you know not really paying a huge amount of attention just because it was you know kind of almost like a point and shoot in a way whereas this is just much more engaging much more tactile you're much more kind of focused on street photography and trying to look for an interesting scene um, yes yeah, so I definitely think there's a benefit to kind of having that more manual um, having that kind of more manual experience just to kind of keep yourself engaged in taking pictures. Um, I never actually turn the back screen on just because I like to kind of treat it as a film camera. So when I've been out for the day with this, I try to just not look at any of the pictures I've taken, just uh, keep it off all the time. So it's simply just the optical viewfinder and that's it, just to kind of avoid any distractions. Uh, also save the battery life, so I can almost like get a full day of shooting just on one battery, which is pretty handy, because the batteries are quite pricey. I like to take a lot of pictures of dogs. Um, some people may have seen some of these. Um, I have struggled a bit with the kind of rangefinder focusing system with taking pictures of dogs, because you obviously have to kind of focus on the distance and then squat down uh, if the dog's moving as well, particularly on the tube, because Maybe I have to shoot wide open, the plane of focus becomes quite small. So I have missed quite a few shots uh, of dogs in particular using this camera. I think it just takes a bit more practice. I can't really blame the camera, it's me obviously. But uh, yeah, that's my kind of main issue I've had is just kind of setting the distance and then getting to a different like lower angle. Uh, again, because I don't really use the screen and it doesn't flip or anything, you can't really check the focus or see the exact frame without kind of lying on the floor, which in some situations isn't really an option. One thing I found is the look of this camera seems to kind of disarm people a bit. Um, people think it's either a kind of like film camera or they just kind of like the way it looks. Uh, people stop me and ask about it all the time. I've had quite a few instances where I've taken someone's picture, they've looked at me and I've kind of expected them to kind of confront me and they've just come up and asked about the camera and gone like, oh, that's an interesting camera. Oh, where'd you get it? Uh, what's it called kind of thing. So yeah, I think there is definitely some kind of psychology to having a kind of unthreatening camera in a way or an interesting looking camera. Um, the reaction to this is pretty much always positive, which is really handy, especially when I'm out on the tube. So for street photography, it's really fast to use. It's unobtrusive. People don't seem to mind it. I love the rangefinder system. Uh, if I mess up a shot, it's 100% my fault, so I can't really blame the camera. Um, I just think it's helped me learn. I genuinely think it's made me better at street photography. That might be subjective, just because of me trying to justify the amount of money I've spent on it. I don't know, but let me know what you think of this kind of video. It's not really a kind of review, it's just my kind of thoughts, um, why I like using a rangefinder. Um, anybody else who's used a rangefinder, drop me a comment below, let me know what you think. Uh, any suggestions for other kind of indoor bound videos over the next few weeks, give me a shout. Uh, thanks for sticking it out. Uh, please do like and subscribe and see you in the next one.